Hi, I'm Mike, and we're here in the Lab Society R&D Lab, and we're going to go over the differences between our different thermocouple adapters that we offer for our distillation heads and our different distillation systems, as well as for other applications as well. So here I've got three different types of 2440 thermocouple adapter or thermo wells. So these two here are probably going to be the most comparable. Um, these both have open sockets, so that essentially we'll be able to actually stick a thermocouple through this and into a solution while maintaining a vacuum seal on the O-ring to glass interface here. And then we also have a quarter inch version of the same. The other one is eighth inch. So you can see we have our O-ring here and this is for larger thermocouple probes. The nice thing about these guys is that they actually will hold the thermocouple in place so that it does not move, which helps with vacuum sealing as well as just stability within a solution. So you can see that they're pretty locked in there. Our thermo wells are closed at the bottom, and this is for users that want to maybe add surface area to a point or maybe measure the temperature with a slight variance. So essentially having this closed well means that there will be a temp temperature differential between the actual temperature of a solution or reaction and what's reading in the thermocup. Basically, the way, one way to mitigate that is to actually fill this with mineral oil. Some people will fill these with mineral oil and then you'll be hitting the exact point you want to hit. So where our closed thermo wells kind of come into place is on our high efficiency heads, we have two different ports. We have a port on the side and we have a port in the top. The port in the top can be used as a thermo well slot so that we can add surface area and add reflux to increase the amount of rejection that come, of vapor that comes out of the head. So anything that condenses on this will actually drip straight back down into the flask and then go through reflux again. And then at the same time, we can be reading our temperature inside of our head off to the side with a fixed thermocouple adapter on the side. So for these different types of scenarios, you know, we're definitely gonna, thermocouple probe placement is gonna become extremely important. So these are bendable. It's very important that you know, users know that they're bendable, they're made of stainless steel, so they're not gonna break over time unless you really wanna break them or you clamp them down or something. So, um, but it's also important to know that whenever you have a fixed thermocouple probe, you never wanna put it in while it's bent because if you do, you can really risk breaking the actual thermocouple itself. So here's an example of a broken thermocouple adapter that likely either someone tried to remove the thermocouple while it was bent or tried to insert it while it was bent. Because as you can see, while it's bent, you cannot force that through. Glass will break, this will not. So we're also gonna talk about how we can actually use these probes effectively with a proper vacuum seal. So there's three parts to a thermocouple adapter. We're gonna have the, the actual glass adapter itself, the O-ring, which is made of Viton, and we'll also have a number four chem thread cap. The inside of this cap, actually has a bezel so that it compresses this o-ring against the cap the the glass so the way that we'd assemble this if we were going to put a thermocouple into it is we're going to put the o-ring right on there and then we're going to go ahead and put the cap on and screw it on make sure that the, the o-ring stays seated we want to make sure that we can see right down inside of that hole we're going to want to see that that's compressing from there we know that if we stick our thermocouple in we'll have a good seal which is vacuum tight and ready for action. Another aspect of thermocouple adapters and keeping them long-term use is actually lubricating the O-rings. So if we look at these O-rings, they kind of have a matte finish as a, tip, as a general rule of thumb right out of the factory. But th these actually look a little bit more matte and dried out than I would say is good. So we're, we're gonna wanna lubricate these periodically. And this stands true for all different types of O-rings and things ranging in chemistry applications to auto mechanics. So what we'll do is we'll take a tiny bit of vacuum grease. The vacuum grease we can use here is gonna be silicone-based Dow, which is NSF. We're gonna wanna make sure we use a food grade uh, vacuum grease for this. This isn't gonna get into our product. This is purely just for the O-ring here. Um, you can also use um, Appiazon. Appiazon is now NSF as well, so we'd recommend the use of that. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll take a tiny little bit and just put it onto the O-ring like that and just rub it around. We don't want this to be dripping with grease or anything. We just want it to be nice and lubricated so that we get a good vacuum seal. And we protect the O-ring so we don't have to replace them all the time. There we go. Nice and seated, good to go. 
And the same thing with this one. Honestly, just a little tiny bit of grease on your gloves will do it. It's like the smallest amount is all you need. Really not much at all. Nice and shiny. And this will last longer and it'll work better. So that's some information on our thermocouple adapters and our different thermal wells. We have plenty of different options that are actually coming out soon that'll also be used to increase the surface area inside of our distillation heads. But for now, this is uh, the different options that we have and we hope that you enjoy them.